Outrocast. Good morning. How is your day going aside from having to do media today? <laughs> Everything is just fine. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to hear that. So we're here to talk about a new movie. Was this one of your more challenging ones to make? And I ask that because you have more credits than the average person I speak with. And also on oh, top really? of that, you jump between, you know, major blockbuster films, the Deadpool series, yet The Good Wife, which has nothing to do with Deadpool and numbers and medium. In other words, you can't go, that's Morena's kind of project. You're very diverse. Well, you went, you went way, way back there. Um, yes, that's true. And I, I, I take pride in that. Um, I'm drawn to really great characters, I would say. Um, this one was a joy to do. It's a character I've never played before. She's... You know, I like these really smaller character-driven films. They're a great pleasure to work on um, as an actor. And Philip and Pierce, you know, we did a lot of work together to deepen these characters. And and um, Philip is such a thoughtful director. And it was a lot of fun to work on a person. You know, she's a little bit rough around the edges. She's sort of like a no BS person. I, you know, I got to wear very little makeup and and just be sort of very into her emotional internal life. And that was that was really uh, different. What was your gateway into this film? Obviously, and this is a compliment, obviously you're past the point of cattle call auditions, but did you know a producer, was there a co-star where they went, hey, you're perfect for this, Marina? Uh, to be honest, I don't really know. I'm sure it had something to do with my agent uh, looking for stuff and um, they offered it to me. Um, and I'm a huge, huge fan of Phillips. I think he's a phenomenal director. I remember being completely blown away um, way back in the day by Rabbit Proof Fence. And since then, he's also made some incredible action films. Um, and Pierce, of course, being attached um, was a definite bonus. Uh, so I, I read the script and I really loved the story. And I, I liked how different these two people were and how their lives converge. And they go on this really improbable journey together. And you know, learn from each other. And I liked the nuanced romance in it, that it was very um, light to the touch and just, um, you know, the, the world that was created by this film was a very unique one. Well, speaking of the world, these days you can't tell where a movie is filmed. They'll say Massachusetts and it's Long Island. They'll say LA and it's really right. Mexico. Where was this one filmed? Uh, this was filmed in New Orleans, so we're very much in the world. You know, we didn't get to go to Mississippi um, for any of the of the Biloxi stuff, but we were in the you know in the that the vicinity, um, and it was all filmed locally. It seems one in four projects these days are filmed in New Orleans or Louisiana as a whole. Is that your existence as well? I don't know. That was actually my first time and my only oh. time uh, shooting there. So I haven't, yeah, I haven't had to do too much of that. Um, a lot for me has been Atlanta, actually, weirdly. I wouldn't say weirdly. I mean, what, you have the three biggest studios in the country there right now. Yes. So it's kind of... That's true. With that, That's true. well, if the compliments can keep coming, I don't speak to a lot of performers who actually went to Juilliard or LaGuardia. Uh -huh. So... Uh -huh. With your class of LaGuardia, aka the Fame High School, were there any classmates of yours that we would also know? Um, that's a good question. I, they weren't classmates, but were there at the same time. Corey Stoll, um, oh. and um, well, Adrian Grenier. Um, oh. um, I'm trying to think of anybody in my class. I'm sure. There is somebody I, I put you on that the spot. I'm forgetting. Anytime Kalise I speak to somebody. Kalise was in my class, but she didn't really go on to become an actor. Oh. Um, yeah. Sorry to put you on the spot there. Whenever I speak to somebody from That's Berkeley. Okay. I haven't thought, I about, I haven't thought about high school in a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's been one or two years. I get it. But uh, the bottom line, <laughs> this is a great new film. It's a, it's a new film to us. It's kind of an old film to you. And there's a lot of stuff for IMDb to come. Are we allowed to know which film is next for you? Um, I shot a film called Elevation. It hasn't come out yet or, or uh, it's another indie. So hopefully it'll sell soon. They're, they're finishing it up and hopefully we'll be shooting another film in April. But, you know, with the strike, it's been a little tough. So we're, I'm happy to 
to get back to work. Did the strike lead you to picking up any new hobbies? <laughs> I don't have much time. I have three kids, so that became my life. <laughs> so soccer practice, <laughs> carpooling kind of stuff? Um, absolutely. I've, I've become a total soccer mom, so it's going to be really good to get out of the house for a little bit. Gotcha. Well, in general, when you're not busy with the family or the work, is there a hidden talent or side hustle that we don't know about that we should know about? Because every actor I speak to these days has an album coming out, a fashion line, a <laughs> CBD line, a wine, a coffee. And then others go, no, I'm an, I'm an actor. That's my craft. That's it. I really enjoy um, producing. That's something that I work on on the side. I also, uh, I'm on the board of a phenomenal organization that works in the arts and education called Waterwell. Um, and I, on my other copious amounts of free time, um, <laughs> also am an ambassador for IRC, uh, International Rescue Committee, and do a lot of work for, for them. So definitely keeping busy. I will say so. And do you have enough mantle space for all the awards that you've been nominated for and or won? Or does that all go in storage? Oh, thank you for saying that. Um, I've not, I've only won a few. Um, I've been nominated, I think, more than I've won. So maybe my time is coming now. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Well, uh, the last yes. two questions before I let you go, they're softballs. First one is, I know there's the three kids involved, but what's the last concert that you went to for fun? Oh, uh, that's an easy one because it was recent. Uh, Lauren Hill and the Fugees. Wow. Full band or solo Lauren Hill? Full band. Well, her and then they came on as well at the end. It was it was so much fun. With Flea on Trumpet, one of those shows? Yeah. Wow. You saw a great show. Okay. Last question before I, I go. Uh, is there a kind of role that you haven't done yet that you're still hoping to happen? There's a lot. I mean... You know, it also evolves um, with with time, but I I haven't really done a period piece yet. And that's something I've been really interested in for a long time since I'm classically trained, but it tends to be not the jobs that I get, which is really funny. Um, so that would be really cool. Okay, well, the bottom line is you're producing, you're prolifically acting, you're on boards, you're gonna win awards, we've established. So I'm looking forward to what's <laughs> come from you. And I'm glad there's really the best possibly is yet to come from you, Morena. Let's hope so. Outrocast.